The first thing we need to do in dynamics is to define some foundational concepts. And so because dynamics is the science that describes the motion of bodies, or even more precisely, it's the science that determines the position and velocity of an object under the action of forces, we need to describe how to do to determine the position and velocities. And so we do that with vectors, which is our first foundational concept. So pause the video for a moment and write down your definition of a vector in your own words. Now most likely, you wrote down something about having three coordinates to be able to define an arrow or a tip to tail or something like that. However, we need to back out a little bit and consider what a vector actually is, and it's a geometric concept. And so the definition of a vector is a geometric entity that has both magnitude and direction in space. And this space is a special type of space. We live in three-dimensional Euclidean space. So understanding dynamics is actually about understanding geometry. Now you're going to be tempted to turn all this into a math class that deals with coordinates, but don't do that, okay? So we're always going to take the approach in which we conceptualize geometry, which is defined by vectors, and then solve the dynamics problems, which are vectors, using math. So now let's consider some of the types of vectors that we'll encounter in this course. A lot of these vectors you'll recognize from statics, like force vectors, moment vectors, position vectors, or unit vectors. But we're also going to define vectors that you haven't used before, at least not in statics, such as velocity vectors, acceleration vectors, momentum vectors, and that's linear momentum and angular momentum, impulse vectors, and also these things called basis vectors. And because we'll be dealing with vectors so much, it's important that we're very precise with our notation. So here we have an R and then the subscript P slash O and then the T, which is a position vector that goes from point O to point P. So we would draw it with an arrow. And so in the subscripts, our P is defining our tip, and the O, in this case, is defining the tail of the vector. So from tail to tip, and we say this as the position of P with respect to O. And then because we're in dynamics, we have this parentheses T, which says that this vector is changing with respect to time. Now in the book or any type of type documents, the vector is going to be a bold face, and anytime you see a bold face, it's a vector. Anytime you see a non-bold face, like this T, it means it's a scalar, so time is always a scalar. And so, but when we write this, we're going to write this with an underline, and the underline is important because it says that this is a vector, because we can't write bold face. So R underline P slash O, so that would be the position vector of point P with respect to O. And so distinguishing between the vectors and the scalars is crucial in this class. Now, one exception to the underline is that I like to distinguish unit vectors with a hat. And so that means that if we have a unit vector u, you can draw a hat over it, and that tells me that that's a unit vector. So some of the ones that you'll see, it can be a u, will have things like e sub x, or e sub y, which will make up the basis vectors, which we'll eventually get to. And this says that it's a unit vector and that they serve a particular purpose. So now let's discuss the properties of vectors. And we'll use this generic ve vector b. We have already said that a vector is a geometric entity that has both a magnitude and direction. And the magnitude is simply the length of the vector. So we can measure the length of the vector, and that gives us the magnitude. And that has a special notation, and we'll say that that's the vector b. And we'll put these bars around it. That's called the norm of the vector, n-o-r-m. Now, we don't, we're still not dealing with coordinates yet. This is a geometric quantity, because we're saying it's simply if we just measure the vector and say how long it is. And then the direction of our vector is pointed in the direction of a unit vector. And so if we draw this unit vector, a u sub b, I'll put a hat on it because it's the unit vector, 
And recall from statics that a vector is going to be the magnitude of that vector multiplied times the unit vector. And so which also tells us that if we need to find the unit vector of a vector, or the direction of a vector, this u sub b is equal to the vector itself, b, divided by the magnitude of that vector. And the next key property of vectors is that when we add two vectors together, we get a new vector. And so here we see that if we add the position vector of p with respect to o to the position vector of q with respect to p, then we get a new vector, that's the position vector of q with respect to o. And these are always going to add, or they're going to obey the triangle rule, which says that r of q with respect to o is equal to r of p with respect to o plus r of q with respect to p. And the triangle rule tells us that we can add these vectors tip to tail. Now this is obvious for things like position vectors, but it's also true for force vectors, velocity vectors, acceleration vectors, and so on. And so in summary, we've defined a vector as a geometric entity that has both magnitude and direction within Euclidean space. We've talked about a few vectors, we've described how to write vectors, and then two key properties about both the magnitude and the direction, and then the second property is the addition of the vectors.